Hi, so I think creating a literature review is one of the most challenging tasks that a graduate student has to face and I wanted to show you some tools and some approaches that I've been playing with. Um, basically, you know, you could think of this as a theoretical question. If you have a set number of papers, let's say you have 40 PDFs or you have 80 PDFs, and what you need to do is to extract the relevant information from those and um, bring them into a format where it's all organized and sorted and the relevant information is structured correctly. And the other question is, during your work with ideas, during your intense work with these articles, um, is there anything about all the thinking that goes into structuring these ideas that can be somehow captured and can this actually be useful to other people? And I'm not going to answer all those questions here, but I want to show you one uh, neat tool that I uh, came up with. So basically, you know, let's say we've already collected a huge amount of articles um, through Google Scholar, through following up on bibliographies and so on. So here I have, for example, articles about massive open online courses, which I want to look into. Basically, what I'm trying to do is to do a literature review about research on open courses and specifically teaching and learning, so not the course material. Anyway, starts off, of course, by having to read a lot of papers. So we'll start with this paper, um, open it in Skim, right? And I'm using a highlighter, so so after having spent uh, you know some time on this, I've got a bunch of highlights here, got some personal notes, and of course what I do then is I uh, export all this to uh, my wiki, and so here we have the uh, exact notes that I took. You see the notes here and so on, and uh, now I want to go into the side wiki um, and read through my notes and try to take some high-level notes. So I start by um, typing in some ideas and after a while I've got a pretty good structure here so I'll save this and reload the page and now we've got you know nicely structured notes from this paper um, and we still have our highlights here of course so let's say I've been doing this for a few weeks and I'm starting to get a bunch of papers. Um, one very quick way of uh, seeing the papers that I've been reading, I just uh, mo I, I modified a little cleanup script I had to just show me um, all the papers I've uh, posted during the last two weeks. So um, this actually is a script I wrote to uh, uh, create an idea log, but uh, I just modified it for so the last 20 days, right? So, so there's a bunch of papers here that I've been taking notes on and basically I need to, you know, so all of these papers have pretty um, good high-level notes. Now, the problem is I've, I've chosen really good articles, so that's the first task. I've read them, I've marked them up, and I've taken high-level notes for all these papers. That's a lot of work, yet um, you know, faced with all these papers, it's still not obvious to me how I'm going to be able to extract the relevant pieces of information from each paper um, and put them all together. It's still kind of hard to uh, to to get to grips with. So uh, there's probably a lot of ways of doing this. One thing that I experimented with was actually um, this other tool um, called Task Paper which is uh, basically just a text editor but it's optimized for structured information so for example uh, if I write uh, it's and it's made for to-do list right so uh, if I write shopping and a colon it makes that a headline and uh, if I make uh, a task then I can do get milk and if I click on this thing it says done so it's basically just a text editor but it has some special functionality built in for to-do lists and I thought, you know, maybe I'll just for fun try to do use this to, to go through these articles and just extract, you know, the very, very minimal that I'll need for my lit review. Because in my structured notes, I've really tried to capture the whole argument of the article, which, uh, you know, will not be necessary for my literature review. So what I did was I put the, these side by side. So I'll make my browser smaller. Okay, that's probably... Um, fine and then I can uh, go to some of these articles and I can start reading 
and I'll just capture this uh, site key, which is quite important. So let's say so papers. Let me just capture that site key, and then let's see. So twelve high performing adults and other directed learners. So I'm taking some notes here of stuff that's just really relevant. I'm aiming to get just a few lines for each paper and get it all into one file. Um, so after a while, that might look like this. So here I've uh, gone through uh, all the papers. Uh, I've made some categories uh, of different papers. Actually, that wasn't really necessary, but it's something I started doing. And I've just uh, used the site key here to get started, and then I have uh, taken some very quick notes, as you see. Some of them uh, more, some of them less, right? This paper, I've only got uh, one or two lines. So what I wanted to do now is to go through and uh, extract things based on topic. For example, um, from this specific paper, I might want a little bit of it to be for my uh, empirical studies section. I want a little bit of it for my methodology section, a little bit of it for my uh, theoretical framework section, and so on. And what I typically do is open a new window here and start copying and pasting. And of course, when you're copying something, uh, let's say I'm copying this thing, I'll have to make sure to also copy the site key um, because, of course, I need to know where that line came from, right? Uh, so instead of that, uh, I thought, hey, is there a, a quicker way of doing this? And one way would be to use tagging. And nicely, this task paper also has built-in um, keyword completion for tagging. So that makes it really fast. So let's say if I started going through here, and I said, you know, learning model, okay, that's relevant to learning. And evaluate learning, let's say that's uh, relevant to methodology. You know, one way you could do this, the very simplest way would be to go through, you know, line by line and just uh, choose, say, you know, this line has this tag learning, so move this line into the bucket called learning. Move this line into the bucket called methodology. However, there are two things that we know about the structure of this file that can help us. The first thing is that um, all the information that's below a site key like this, so all of the indented stuff here until we hit another site key, basically comes from the same publication. So we can automatically tag this line learning with this site key. Okay. Now the second thing we know is that because we're using indentation to create a hierarchy, these three points effectively belong to this point. So ideally, if I tag this point with learning, I probably want to grab these three points as well. Um, and of course, uh, if I grab this one, I say this is theory, then I both want this whole thing to appear in learning, and I want this one line to appear in theory. So there's nothing saying that you can't have parts of the text appearing multiple places, right? That's really the whole principle. And just to show you that this is actually is a text file, I'll just load it up in a normal text uh, editor. Uh, this is the script, by the way. So if I go here, and you see this is exactly how the how the text file looks. So it's exactly the same contents, it just doesn't have the nice highlighting and stuff like that. But that means that we can very easily write a program uh, that uh, extracts these tags for us, right? And that's exactly what I did. Now, there's, uh, you know, after it extracts these tags, it can, and once it understands the inner structure, it can then output it in different ways. And of course, you know, so let's try first of all to just extract uh, this in um, in a format exactly similar to this. Now I'm going to add a bunch more tags. Okay, so I've gone through and I've added a bunch of different tags. And uh, you know, while you're adding the tags, you you're kind of just experimenting. You're not quite sure which of these tags are going to turn out to be really useful and which of them want, but that's okay. You can play back and forth. Uh, you can come up with tags. And, of course, the, uh, the keyword completion you know, works really well. And so you can see here if I add a new tag, I get 
a long list of all the tags that I've come up with already. Okay, now, so the first thing we're going to do is to just run it through this little script. And in this case, I'm going to, so I can choose different outputs. I'm going to choose task paper. So that means it creates a, a similarly formatted file, but instead of being structured by paper, it's structured by tag. So I just run that, and it says 72 tags written. Okay, so I actually created 72 tags. Now that might be a bit too much, but you know that's just an experiment. Let's let's see how that works out though. Now if we open, you see that it's uh, it looks similar, but it's organized a bit differently. So e for each tag becomes a, a top level um, heading. And then underneath that, you get it structured by paper. Now, what's important to remember is that these uh, clippings might be from different parts of the paper notes. So this might not be one tag. This might be two or three tags that were all found under this header, uh, this sort of specific paper. And we see here there's a bunch of different papers that talk about learning. And of course, this uh, indenting is, is preserved if it, it was there. Uh, we have here's detecting learning. Here's uh, why should uh, learning be distributed? So I come up, you know, here's self-regulated learning. Here's empirical. Um, so there's a bunch of different uh, categories here, as you see. Now I also added uh, the final one here, which is it's not tagged. And so any text in the whole file that didn't get included in any tag. I listed it here, and this is just to make sure that you didn't miss anything. Um, and then you see here, no side key, so those are, uh, that's text that wasn't directly uh, related to any article, and I, I still uh, put it there. So this is one way of looking at it, and I think already you see how, you know, how much time it would have taken to um, extract all this text and get the, the right citation with it and stuff like that, and it's, it's quite useful to see, um, you know, uh, who have written about a certain topic, and you can very quickly get a sense of what that looked like. But in fact, I, I really like to write my papers in Scrivener, um, which is uh, this uh, program for writing for creative writing. Uh, has a really nice split screen, which is actually how I got inspired to do the split screen functionality in uh, in SiteWiki, this uh, researcher. So if we go back here. And we say, okay, fine, but instead of task paper, can you please output it as Scrivener? Okay, same thing. Now let's start up Scrivener. So when we start Scrivener, we come to this empty, empty field. So if I go to Finder, um, I can see here that it created a new folder called Lit Review Out, and it actually created a new text file for each single um, topic, uh, and each topic then contains just exactly the clipping for that uh, specific topic. And the nice thing about that is that we can drag this whole folder into Scrivener and it automatically imports all of these notes for us. Then we can go here and choose split screen. And I like to do the uh, vertical split. And I can start a new topic here. So I'll say um, empirical studies. And of course, I want the notes from empirical studies here, so I'll pull those up. So now I have all my notes from different, and I put here I put them at the bottom because I figured you know the contents are more important. But again, changing the formatting is is really easy once you have the data. So I can start uh, writing. I can say empirical studies. There was a study on a P2P course, um, and then I can just copy this, right, see, okay, there was another study, right, so I can I can work like that, and after working uh, like this for a while, then you're starting to fill in um, the draft of the paper that you're writing, you can have subcategories, you can quickly jump, uh, you know, between different uh, topics that you're writing, um, you can you know, keep track here. I, I create an archive folder. So these are the topics that I've already gone through. Um, you know, these might be the ones that I'm working on right now, and so on. 
Um, now, once I'm kind of happy with this, and I'm actually not happy yet, I'm, I'm maybe 20% done, but for the purposes of this video, uh, what I can do is I can just go and uh, compile this, uh, and there's a bunch of different options, but I just want to compile it for plain text. So I'll do that, and I'll put this in my wiki directory. Okay, so I'll uh, put that directly into my wiki directory, and I just do need to do one more thing. There's this is almost wiki markup because wiki markup actually, you know, is very simple. Doesn't need a lot. The uh, h3, h4 means headline and so on. But there's a few tiny changes that I added. So I'll just go and run a script. Convert markdown to DocuWiki, and I'll do wiki data pages draft literature. So this is the one that I just compiled. And all it does is it generates a new new um, text file in the same place with the markup slightly modified. So let's go have a look at how that looks right now. Okay, we'll put this back into the big size. And here you see exactly how the literary. So this file was just generated. And you know you have a nice table of contents that you get for free, um, and here you have uh, my uh, notes. So this is not done yet, but you know you see that just using these site keys that have been following me the whole way, um, you get these nice pop. So it automatically formats the citations nicely. You get these nice pop-ups, um, and of course you can click on this, and because it's a wiki, it will then take you straight back to the notes. Right, which is pretty cool, and at the bottom it's automatically generated a nice bibliography of all these papers. So that was all automatic. Now, eventually, you know, this is nice for uh, while I'm authoring. Ideally, at the end, you'd be able to press another button and get a very nice Word document or even a, a nicely formatted PDF. And given that you have all the structure, uh, that really shouldn't be too hard. But I haven't gotten that far yet. Anyway, that's uh, kind of what I want to show you. Um, most of this isn't new. Um, the most of the workflow isn't new, but I thought it'd be nice to show it um, with a case study of actually trying to get something done rather than just showing up functionality. But what is kind of new is this tool for extracting uh, text based on tags, and you know, it's it's a small thing, but I think it's actually pretty cool. And it's something that you could use um, yourself. It doesn't uh, really depend on anything else in Researcher. Uh, it could take any kind of text file as long as it has um, this indentation uh, and some tags. That's all you need. So you could use, don't have to use task paper. You could use maybe org mode in Emacs or you could use, uh, you know, any other kind of outliner. So thanks a lot.